I don't know about you people, but I was excited to see that as of January 6, 2020, DJI brought back the Phantom 4 Pro version 2.0. I was convinced that I got one of the last ones, maybe even the last one, when I bought mine a little over a year ago from B&H. I checked their site right after I ordered it and it said they were out of stock and that status continued until eventually it changed to discontinued later in the year. Not only did the Phantom 4 Pro appear to be history, it looked like the entire Phantom line might be discontinued since DJI has been very quiet about the possibility of a Phantom 5. This was a bit disturbing since I just bought a piece of expensive tech that was no longer available. Parts would be more difficult to find in the event that I uh, crashed my drone, which did happen, or any other maintenance needs that I might have. And third parties wouldn't be likely to continue to develop accessories for the Phantom line. But all those fears were laid to rest when the Phantom's return hit the internet. <laughs> Well, sorta, because I don't know how long the Phantom 4 Pro version 2.0 will last. Uh, first of all, it's an older model, having come out in May 2018, and the first version of the Phantom 4 Pro came out in November 2016. That's a long time ago in tech years, and in the meantime, folding drones like the Mavic series seem to have dominated the consumer drone market. That having been said, I for one really like the Phantom's position in the lineup. It represents a crossover from the consumer drones to the pro drones in a way that's easy to define, both in the price range and in the physical appearance. Not only that, the introduction of the Phantom line had a huge impact on the drone market. It's a modern classic. Now that the Phantom 4 Pro version 2.0 is once again on the shelves, the question is, should you buy one in 2020? Over the past year, there have been several new drones from DJI's competitors to hit the market, and the rumors of the Phantom 5 come and go with the wind. Maybe they're building it in a cave somewhere along with the Sony A7S III. Either way, I still think the Phantom's most obvious competition in its price range is the other popular prosumer DJI drone, the Mavic 2 Pro. At least as far as I'm concerned, the attempt to decide between these two models is not much different than it was in 2018. So I'll go through a few things that weighed into my decision when I bought my first Phantom 4 Pro in 2018, which was actually a uh, version 1 of the drone. So this will be a bit more like a long-term review, not only of the Phantom 4 Pro version 2.0, but also a review of my decision to buy it. Keep in mind that any comparisons that I'm making are just based on my own uh, perspective and my own specific needs. By any measure, the Mavic 2 Pro and the Phantom 4 Pro are both fantastic drones, and I wish I could afford to have one of each, so try not to get mad at me if I say I prefer one thing over another. Before I get into the specs, I want to go over a few things to consider regarding the general design of the Phantom series. First of all, I really like the form factor of the Phantom series. If you're looking for something that packs up nicely in your backpack, you'll probably prefer a folding drone like the Mavic series. But for me and for my use, the size of the Phantom body is not a problem. What I really prefer about the body is the legs keep the props elevated, and that extra clearance can come in handy for landing on uneven surfaces or in tall grass and it's a lot less stressful for catching and launching the drone by hand. I've seen guys like Potato Jet launch and catch the Mavic 2 Pro by hand with reckless abandon, and I've done this a time or two with my buddy's Mavic Air, but it always makes me a bit more nervous than catching the Phantom. And since I'm a professional musician, I really don't want to hack up my hands or my fingers if I can avoid it. At the end of the day, hand catching and launching is not a recommended procedure, and you do so at your own risk. I'm certainly not advising you to do it. A bonus for this design is that the legs provide a good structure for the gimbal lock, which I'll talk more about later, and on a whimsical side, I just like the way the Phantom looks. It's like a friendly little animatronic pet. Next up is the controller, and I know a lot of people prefer the smaller controllers that accompany the Mavic series, but I really prefer the Phantom's larger controller. I think it's a bit more stable in the hands. But more importantly, the screen is above the sticks instead of below or inside them, and I'm sure I'd get used to the Mavic controller if I used it long enough, but it seems a bit counterintuitive to me. Another attribute for the controller is that it comfortably holds a tablet. The iPad mini is very nicely proportioned for it, and I'm a big fan of having just a bit larger screen. Now you can get tablet adapters for the Mavic controller, but that rig looks really top-heavy to me. If anybody out there has a favorable experience with that setup, let me know in the comments. For me, the camera specs are the most important consideration for buying the Phantom 4 Pro. 
And if you want an exciting flying experience, you'd probably be happier with an FPV racing drone anyway. But I care about the photography and the videography and the quality of the camera. And since the Phantom 4 Pro and the Mavic 2 Pro have a very similar set of camera specs, it's really like splitting hairs to decide between them. They both have the 1-inch sensor. They both format video in H.264 and H.265. They both shoot 4K, and the list of similarities just keeps going on and on. But the small differences are what did indeed make the difference for me. The Phantom 4 Pro has a slightly wider field of view of 84 degrees versus the 77 degree field of view of the Mavic 2 Pro. And this isn't necessarily a positive or a negative for either camera, but it's something to be aware of. Now, I've seen some footage comparisons online that illustrated another benign difference being in that the color temperature of the Mavic 2 was a little bit warmer straight out of camera than that of the Phantom, but it's not a huge difference and it can easily be adjusted to taste and post no matter which drone you're using. Now for the more meaningful differences, the Phantom 4 Pro has a few advantages that should be mentioned. In terms of video, it offers 4K 60 as well as Cinema 4K, and even though I usually shoot in UHD 4K at 24 frames per second, the Cinema 4K option gives me a little bit more horizontal room to crop and post if I want to, and the ability to shoot up to 60 frames per second in 4K can be helpful in some cases. Regular 4K 60 footage can be great if you're just trying to get super clean, sharp video video quality, and there are times that it's good to have the flexibility to slow the footage down uh, with a higher frame rate if you want to drop it into a 24p timeline. On the still side, the Phantom has a mechanical shutter, which really helps eliminate the rolling shutter effect in shooting objects that are moving quickly. In the listed specs, the Mavic 2 Pro has an advantage in that it offers 10-bit color, and the Phantom 4 Pro does not. However, I have some skepticism about how much difference that really makes. My Panasonic GH5 is a far more capable camera than any of the drone cameras in this particular price range, and I find its 10-bit color settings to be only a marginal improvement at 150 megabits per second, so the 100 megabit per second maximum of the Mavic 2's camera doesn't seem like it would be enough to adequately support an advantage in 10-bit color. If you have a different experience with the Mavic 2's 10-bit color, let me know in the comments. I'd definitely like to hear about it. The Phantom 4 Pro has a good array of useful flight modes, but the Mavic 2 has a few more options, with the hyperlapse being the one I would probably find the most useful. Probably the biggest photo slash video advantage of the Mavic 2 is that it has 8 gigabytes of onboard memory, and that could save the day if you forget your memory card, and I really wish the Phantom 4 Pro had that feature. Now on to the performance specs. According to DJI, the Phantom 4 Pro has a respectable maximum flight time of about 30 minutes, and the Mavic 2 does a little bit better, but they're extremely close. In my experience though, DJI's listed flight times are pretty optimistic. I think a little over 20 minutes is more realistic probably for either of those drones. The top speed of the Phantom 4 Pro is about 45 miles per hour in sport mode, and that mostly comes into play for a camera drone if you're fighting a headwind. You certainly don't want to get into a situation where the wind speed is too high to get the drone back home. I think the Mavic 2 has a similar top speed performance, so they're pretty close in that area. The obstacle avoidance of the Phantom 4 Pro is pretty impressive with five directions of avoidance. But the Mavic 2 has a bit more advanced system with six directions of avoidance. Again, I've made all these comparisons to the Mavic 2 Pro because I feel that it's the closest competitor to the Phantom in price and capabilities. There are tons of other drones out there, but you'll probably pay a lot more for any superior features, or you'll get a lot less with a lower price tag. Now, would I still make the same choice to buy the Phantom 4 Pro version 2.0 today? I think I would, I'm not 100% sure, but I still appreciate all the same things that drew me to the Phantom in the first place. There have been a few times when I've thought that the Mavic's smaller form factor would have been a lot more convenient, and I would like to make my own comparisons with the 10-bit color, as well as the color profiles of the Mavic 2 Pro. But the attributes of the Phantom that I mentioned would be hard to give up. Either way, you really can't go wrong. They're both fantastic drones. Okay, if you've come this far and you're thinking, maybe I'll get myself one of these nifty contraptions, I'll go through a few of my favorite accessories for the Phantom 4 Pro. Some of these would be applicable to any drone, but some are specifically for the Phantom. 
In order to record photos and video, the Phantom 4 Pro needs a fast micro SD card, and I use the 64GB SanDisk Extreme Plus. After the micro SD card, I would recommend a few extra batteries. 20 minutes of flight time can go by really quickly, and that can get a lot shorter if you have to spend any time setting up or recalibrating the drone, and if you have to fight a headwind at any point. I saved a good bit on extra batteries by buying the Muse. Look for used batteries in good condition from a reputable seller like B&H or Adorama. If you plan to take the drone on any road trips, DJI makes a car charger for the batteries and the controller. It can come in handy when you can't get to an AC outlet. The gimbal lock that comes with the Phantom 4 Pro looks cool, but it's not durable at all, so if you break yours, and you probably will no matter how careful you are, it's a good idea to get a better one, even if it costs a few dollars more. I went through several of the original DJI gimbal locks before I finally wised up and got the Polar Pro version, which is what this is right here, and I really wouldn't advise trying to get by without a gimbal lock. If you value the ability to take control of the shutter speed for video, you'll need to get an ND filter, and even though it'd be nice to have a full arsenal of ND filters, I've found that I've been able to adjust the other exposure settings to get the shutter speed that I want by simply using an ND16 for most situations. If you get the Phantom 4 Pro Plus, you'll get a built-in screen with the controller, but if you get the regular model with the regular controller, you're going to need to use a smartphone or a tablet to monitor the camera on the drone. Now, I wanted a little bit of a larger screen, so I bought an iPad Mini specifically for the Phantom's controller. Plus, I can use the iPad for other things when I'm not flying the drone. Now, a shorter than usual cable for connecting the device to the controller is a good idea. Otherwise, you'll probably need to bind up the excess cable. Once you know what you're going to use for the screen, I'd highly recommend a sunshade. It really helps cut down the glare whenever you have to stand out in the bright sun. The Phantom controller has a little slot on top for a lanyard ring, so a decent lanyard with a fairly wide strap will be something you'll want to use every time. If you think you'll be launching or landing the drone in wet grass or on a dusty surface, a collapsible launch pad can help keep the drone from taking in debris, and I always keep one with me just in case I need it. While they might not be absolutely essential, a few accessory honorable mentions that I like to keep on hand would include things like extra props and an extra micro SD card with a micro to regular SD card adapter and an extra USB cable. If you have any Phantom accessories that you can't leave home without, be sure to leave those in the comments. I'd like to hear about that too. All in all, I still think the Phantom 4 Pro version 2.0 is a great drone and well worth the money in 2020, so what are your thoughts? Let me know what you think about DJI re-releasing the Phantom 4 Pro. Uh, do you prefer the Mavic 2 series or a comparable drone from a different company? Do you think they'll eventually release the Phantom 5? I'd like to hear your thoughts on any of these topics, so please leave me a question or a comment. Click like, subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll see you on the next one.